Welcome! It's a great day to be a miner. In today's video, our friends over at Parallel Miner have sent us another amazing, exciting, and innovative piece of mining equipment to review. But first, let's spin that intro. Welcome! This is the exciting new PPR2 Island Universal Board for Redundancy or Combined Power. Man, that is a mouthful to say. That is the title listed on the Parallel Miner site. So today we're going to tear into this. We're going to go over the specs, the features, and then of course we're going to show you what it looks like hooked up and how to actually use this thing. And again, because it's such a long name, we are going to refer to it as the PPR or the PPR2. So what exactly is this thing? The PPR2, as that fancy name that includes island on it describes, it is a island or a hub. It's a main central place for your power needs. You can hook this up to up to four server power supplies at a time and it's called a universal board because it universally uses six pin PCIe power input and power output. So let's tear into the specs and the features on this thing next. This board comes in at a measurement of 8.4 inches by 6.9 inches. So roughly eight and a half by seven inches. It can combine up to 3,200 watts of power coming in and out of this thing. It highlights the color coded red plugs for your inputs and the white plugs for your outputs and as mentioned it allows six pin PCIe power input and output this board has two primary purposes one is to combine your power supplies again up to 3200 watts and you can combine power supplies of varying power for example, you could have 750 watt power supply, 1200 watt, 1400 watt, even some lowly 460 watt server power supplies all combining into one big power pool. And being as you can use some of these lower no name power supplies, it really could be a way to combine lower power supplies such as say using four of the 460 watt server power supplies all at the same time to actually make them function for a larger rig. The second primary function of this board is to create redundancy. So what exactly is redundancy? Essentially, redundancy is creating a backup source in case of failure, and that would eliminate downtime. Here is a great example of redundancy. I work for a large corporation with very large IT needs. Our main server building has two different internet trunk lines that come in from two different internet service providers. We also have two different main trunk lines for power coming in from two different power companies. And then of course we have generators as well. And then we have backup servers that are redundant to the primary servers. And what all that means is, what all that does is, it combines and it eliminates any downtimes in case of failures. And that's the secondary purpose of this is that you have extra power in case of failures. So how exactly does this create redundancy? Say your rig or your ASIC requires a thousand watts of power. You could simply connect 2000 watts of power into the PPR here. And then if one of those server power supplies goes offline, the other server power supply will automatically pick up the load. So there will be no stoppage or downtime. And of course, no lost hash rate. Another important part of this board that I want to highlight and discuss are these black pieces here. They kind of look like a 20 pin motherboard connector. And what they refer to these are termination plugs. And the termination plug completes the circuit. Basically, it completes the circuit from your input up to your output, to your main power out to your rig or your ASICs. So the great piece about these are they can basically allow your power supplies to be hot swappable. So if you would remove the termination plug, the ports are then rendered disabled so that you could unplug these 
switch the server power supply, plug it back in without ever actually booting down the ASIC or the rig, which means it's essentially turns the server power supply, four of them, hot swappable with another one. So next, let's go ahead and hook this thing up and take a look at the actual filled out circuit and how this would look if you have it essentially set up. All right, for demonstration purposes, we went ahead and hooked this up. We're just gonna hook it up to two server power supplies. This one is a Dell 1100 watt, and it run, is running off of an X11 amp breakout board, which is a common slot, the same as most HP 1200 and HP 750 run. This would be a Dell 750 watt platinum, and it runs off of an X15 breakout board. And what I did was I hooked five of my power cables to the board, and I ran them to the inputs. So five from this one to this input, this is one server PSU. Here is the other one going to these five red ports up here. If I were going to hook up these two, I would run five cables out to my input here. And then I would run five from my outs on my X11 to right here. So essentially you've got one server power supply two, you can hook a third and a fourth. You don't have to have four. You could actually run this thing with one if you wanted to feasibly, but it would make no sense. So you could run t anywhere between one and four server power supplies on there. And then I'm going, I've got to went ahead and plugged them in. We're going to boot this for the first time. And so let's boot right here on this top server power supply on the main slot. And bam, just like that, it didn't just power this one up. It didn't just power this one and the main board up. It powered the other associated board up as well. So you can see just by powering this one up, it will power the other components. So yeah, so there we go. Right like that, we have two server power supplies. I'm running on 120, but say I was running on 240. This would be 1100 watts. This would be another 750. So you would have 1850 of power coming in. Then you would just take these, outputs here and you'd run your outputs to your gpus and to your risers and then or to any of the other components if you were say using an adapter for your motherboard you could run your pico adapter to your motherboard and this would show see here's my input and it's showing my input right there which is slightly different um, than the breakout board showing over here but basically what this means is if this one went bad this power would continue to power this board as long as it was enough power it would keep running and what it also means is it's pulling it's making a big pool of the power supplies so if i had all of these hooked up together i could feasibly have 3200 watts running into my red inputs and then the 3200 watt pool would be running out to my components. Where the redundancy part comes in, say my whole rig, my entire rig, only uses 1600 watts, and I hook 3200 watts up in here, and two of my server power supplies die, I would lose no half hash rate. They would just keep on going. So it's a really great concept, but again, look how much space this is gonna take up. It's a lot more planning if you're doing it on giant wire racking, if you're running on ASICs and you're setting up the power supplies right beside the ASICs anyway, it's not a, a big deal. But if you're just trying to put this in a small mining rig, this is not probably the option for you. But there, there's it hooked up. It's running, it's beautiful. All right, so there it is. It's all hooked up. It looks beautiful. It's really sleek. It's a great design and it's a great innovative thought to it. All right, so we've already went over the features, the highlights, the actual connection of this board. So let's touch on the downside. The only real drawback that I can see for a setup or really any redundant setups are gonna be your cost and your space. As you can see, this will take up quite a bit of space, so you need to make sure to plan accordingly. And if you're using extra server power supplies as a backup, the breakout boards and the extra PCIe power cables. And so the space and the extra cost, that's just some extra items that you need to consider before going ahead and purchasing this. Conclusion, this is a very smart, it's a very innovative product. 
The price point is currently at $55, which is actually slightly lower than I would have expected to pay for this type of item. And I think that it kind of reflects the dip in the crypto mining market as a whole, as well as most of crypto mining products have came in. So that's actually a pretty decent price. Another piece is, again, adding components takes planning. Make sure to think about your process. Make sure to decide if this kind of a setup is right for you. If you decide this is right for you, you wanna check it out, you wanna try this out, I'll make sure to put a link down in the description. I'll also make sure to put some links to some of my favorite Parallel Miner items down in the description. And Parallel Miner, at least if you're US based, they ship super quick. They're quick to get that item out there and their prices are really reasonable. So there's the PPR. Let's go ahead and cut to that outro. <laughs> well, there you have it, the PPR2 breakout board. Tell me what you think of this board down in the comments. Will you be picking one up? Do you think this is a good innovative idea? If you're new to mining or you need some help, make sure to join the Misfit Mining Discord. There's always plenty of seasoned vets in there willing to help you out. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride. Pew!